In this video, I'll be covering QuickBooks Online Certification Exam Section 4, Managing Your Clients and Work. So in this section, we're going to be looking at adding new clients, managing your client list, exploring your subscription and billing dashboard, exploring the work tab and team tab, and looking at various user types and their permission rights. So the navigation section of your QBO account, that's the left-hand side. So it's in two sections. There's the Your Practice and Your Book. Let's look at that. So in the Your Practice section, it starts with Client tab, Team tab, Pro Advisor, Work, and Apps. So we've explored Pro Advisor quite a bit, and we explored the Work tab a little. We'll look further into Clients, Team, and Work with this section. So the Your Books has the overview, dashboard, banking, expenses, sales, worker, time, reports, taxes, mileage, and accounting. Now, take into consideration the interface does change on a regular basis, so there might be some changes when you take the exam, but overall, the questioning should not. So let's look at the question for this section. In QBOA, what area of data does the search box look in? The answer is Your Books section. So this section of it. Accessing your client list. How would we add a new client and access your client list? Well, to do that, you would click on the client tab in the left navigation. So we'll look at that. So here's clients. And this would be a list of my clients here. And I would be able to edit any clients that were in my list. And if I wanted to add a new client, I would come over here to add client. And notice the first thing they ask for is the business name, or if it was an individual, the individual's name and email. Next step of that. The subscription and billing dashboard in QBOA. How can you access the subscription and billing dashboard in QBOA? Well, as I just said, sometimes the interface does change. So when this question was asked a few months ago, the answer would be gear icon and your account. And I even went and looked in the training section to see if it still had this, and it did. I actually got this question from the training section. However, the interface has changed, and the actual correct answer is gear icon and then subscription and billing. I'll show you that in a second. But for the training section, it still has gear icon, your account, and this picture shows the subscription and billing dashboard as it does still view um, for the most part on the interface. However, it's a new procedure to get there. You would go gear icon and subscription and billing. So let's look at this real quick. So it has the list of all your, comp your uh, customers, the subscriptions that they have and the price and the status as well as if they're active or not. And then in this section, if you see over here, you can change a client subscription and billing here. So if you have a wholesale client, you would be able to change that status if they chose to now want to be a direct billing client. You'd be able to do that here. And let me show you where that is here. It's you'd go to the gear icon and under your company, you would see subscription and billing. Itemize invoice of subscriptions. So you can download an itemized invoice for the QBO subscriptions that you saw on that page. And the statement can be downloaded in two different file formats. What two different file formats would that be? It would be CSV and PDF. A lot of people get confused and say Excel and PDF because many of the reports give you the option of Excel or PDF. But in this particular question, we're looking at itemized invoices and they're using the CSV, which is uh, kind of your garden variety Excel or spreadsheet file. So it's your basic spreadsheet file, it's a CSV. So the answer to this one would be CSV and PDF. Subscriptions continued. Which clients can change or downgrade their own subscription level? Well, that would be direct billing clients. Which clients cannot change or downgrade their own subscription level? The answer would be wholesale billing clients, because you're the one that's actually paying, and then you would in turn bill your client. Usage limits for QBO subscriptions. So I got this uh, chart here from the training section, but I really like it. I think you guys should take a picture of it 
and have it with you for when you take your the exam because it actually can answer a few of them. So for example, if they said, what accounts would you have unlimited chart of accounts? Well, the, as you can see here, that would be your advanced. So QBO advanced subscription level has no limits on the number of accounts that you can have within your chart of accounts. So let's look at here. It says, what, which subscription allows for up to 25 billable users? So that's advanced as well. So you see here, advanced has 25 billable users, where plus has five, essentials has three, and simple start has one. How can you check a client's usage? You go to the gear icon and the accounts and settings, and then there'll be a usage tab. Got this picture from the training section. So you go and you click on usage tabs, and you'll see three sections there, billable users, chart of accounts, and class and locations. Adding a team user. We'll look at the team tab in a second on how to add a team member. Let's look at these questions and answers real quick. So what are the three levels of access that can be granted to team users of QuickBooks Online Accounting? Full access, basic, and custom. How would you search through team members to find the payroll specialist? You would go to the team tab in your navigation section, and then you would type payroll specialist in the search box. What are the three ways you can search for a team member? You would need to either have their name, title, or email. So let's look at that. So here we are on my QBOA account. I'm going to go to the team tab. And for me, I only have me, the, the, the master admin. But over here is where they were saying, what would you type in? It would be name, title, or email. You can click over here to add a new user. And then you put their name, their first name, their last name, their email. And then their title, you notice, is not mandatory, but it is one of the search options. Work tab. Now, we've explored the work tab um, because I wanted to show you the manage templates, but there also is the create client request and the create project. And it's in this section that they explore that on the exam. So how do you create a project? Well, the answer would be in your left navigation bar, you would click on the work tab and you would click on create project, which you could see here. So you click on your work tab, and you go to create project. How can you set up a reoccurring project for a client? So you would click the create project and then you would select the repeat button. And then this little section would pop down and then you would set the frequency and duration. Matter of fact, let me show it to you instead of describing it for you to visualize. So let's go to the work tab. And then you have create project. And then I'm going to put pad. And then it comes over here. You would add whatever client you wanted to put this through. And if I wanted to do repeat, that's where I would come here. And then, as I said, something would pop down. And now you would put, you know, is it going to repeat monthly, daily, weekly, yearly? And then you would put the other information in here. I'm going to scroll down and also notice that you can add a task to this. This would not be seen by your client, but your other team members. So like that, I just wanted to give you the visualization. All right, got a couple more questions here. Continue with the work tab, client requests. How do you change the status of a project to done in the QBOA account? You would select that project and then you would select done in this the status drop down. So there's to do. I just like to show you the visualization. So let's let's look at that. So if I go to the work tab and I go to okay, so it's right here. You have the to do, in progress, blocked, done, or canceled. So those are your five. So to do, in progress, blocked, done, and canceled. Those are your five options for your task. Creating a client request in QBOA. When you're in your client request, you can add attachments by going to the plus add link at the bottom. The request appears in the client's QBO account under my accountant. And if you wish to notify your client of the request with your QBO generated email, you would go to the bottom and select notify client.
Client details dashboard screen. So when you, in the client details section, here we are, have our client, there is a section where you can import the QuickBook Online prep for taxes data into your ProConnect tax online to prepare tax returns via the client dashboard. And I just put an arrow down here so you could see where you would click for the prep for taxes. Also through the detailed dashboard screen, you can start a new tax return for the client's dashboard for as well as non-QBO clients um, by clicking here, create tax return. So here we are in my client's um, details. I have all my clients here their emails, and then over here, they have the prep for taxes, and then the next column over is tax return, and I would be able to click here for create tax return. And then remember, that is for QBO clients as well as non-QBO clients. Those are the questions I have for section four. If you have anything that you would like to um, share, please add it to the written section. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to get sections five through eight up in the next week if it is all possible, because I have a class that's about to finish with me. We have one week left and I really want those students to take the exam. So I'm going to try to rush through sections five through eight if I can. Um, but please uh, share anything that you think would be helpful to other people taking the exam in this section. Thanks.